Welcome back, everybody. This is exciting. We've got our do-it-yourself accordion junk uh, art journal here. And we had a lot of fun painting the other side, but we have six pages on the back here. This is the flip side of the book. And the other side is the one with the pockets there. And I'm just arranging it to show you so you can't forget that you've got the fun of painting the other side now. And I've got a few. I pulled out of my stash a few previously tissue printed patterns and I'm not ready to glue them down yet but I'm just kind of trying to think ahead where I might like to put them and in that case what kind of colors I'd like behind them to prepare for that and what I love to do is place them over top of the seams and the um, creases of pages so that it's it's not fitting within each six by inch page that it's more overlapping, which creates a continuous flow through the accordion book. It makes it much more interesting to open up. So what I've got now is I've got um, paper towel and parchment paper below to protect the back side of those pages. I've given it a good spray of water from my spray bottle, and now I'm using my nice, soft, long bristled brush to move around some paint. Again, I'm trying to think of this as six pages together in a continuous flow rather than one page at a time. So you can see where I'm spreading that blue beyond the first page. Again, creating flow and movement. And I love these marks that I've made in the background because it doesn't take much effort at all now to put a little bit of a glaze of color over top and it's got a real marbled granite look or marbly look, and it makes it very interesting without even having to do a lot. It's a good, it's a good start. So the other, the other side I did one look, and this side I'm going to do uh, slightly easier painting sessions so that you can see how wonderful it looks because we already did the marks. You don't have to overdo things too much. Now I'm grabbing pieces of the flat end of paper towels to soak up some of the wa uh, water and paint that's gone in the creases right there so that it doesn't uh, deteriorate the folds of the paper. Because the book can come apart. If you do everything too wet right where all those creases are, it can come apart. It'll, it'll soften and want to come apart. Uh, and when you do things like that where you make it really wet along the crease, make sure you dry it really well before you do too much more so that it does keep the integrity of the paper. So I'm using a paper towel to dab back a bit because what I don't want is too dark right now until I kind of think this through a little more. I can always add more paint later, but I'm trying to make this, it's very much, as you can see, kind of a, a monotone, um, marbly look. I like that. I like it a lot. So I'm going to bring out my green. And I'm adding lots of water so that I make it quite bright. Again, I can make this darker later. But because the pages are still quite wet from the spray of water, I can just delicately add this paint and spread it around and see where we go from there. So that's where I dipped it right into the bottle. You can see it's a darker green compared to the first side where the water, the brush was watered down already. So I'm just moving it around, coaxing it around and then dab with more paper towel. To get, what I'm trying to do, as you know by now, is get an imprint of the texture of the paper towel. Right there. So it's already a very interesting look, a two-page spread already, three-page uh, as it is, but you know, I'm gonna keep going, show you more options. Let's keep going, keep the flow. So I love, again, as I've got that green spreading and the blue beyond the crease of the page so that it forces you to keep looking and your eye moving along. And it creates a journey with this book. Instead of just looking page by page, you've got a real journey and it, you've got a better feeling of exploration and um, journey. And so I've got my pink, my magenta out, and I've got it quite watered down so that it's quite pink. Um, as I've said before, um, that the pigment in this, as you can see right there, the pigment's very strong in this uh, magenta red. So you don't need an awful lot before it makes a really strong color. Now, if you recall earlier when I placed that printed tissue over that general area, 
I knew that it had a lot of white on it, so I want more salt, more um, stronger colors in the background for when I put that tissue print over top. So that's why I've gone from left, the left being lighter and more subtle, I've got more bold colors in these, this middle area. I'm spreading that pink around on the left with the blue and green there, but I'm watering it down a lot. So what happens is it becomes, and once that watered down magenta hits the blue on the page, it becomes almost a lilac. And lilac is a fantastic complement to that blue and green. You can see already that it, it, the lilac suits it quite well. Whereas I'm sticking with the strong magenta color over towards the right here. And again, I'm making that really bold because I'm going to put a fairly white tissue print over top of that. So I'm bringing out those prints. And the one before I do all five pages, I want to kind of kind of work in this front half of it for now, the first three pages more so than all of it at once. So I've got a very, very subtle fine line print that I'm going to stick with on the left. And I've got this very bold with lots of white in it that's going to go over. And because there's so much white there, I wanted bold. And in fact, I even need the blue to be bolder underneath. So I'm going to add a little blue before I put that tissue print down for good. So I'll spray it with water so it's not too, too strong. Put some paper towel underneath to protect the back pages. And let's get some more blue on that page. That water was quite pink from all the, so I've, I've washed the brush off. I've dabbed off that bit that I put there and I'm going to use the spray bottle. I don't have time while I'm videotaping to run and change the water in that jar. So I'm just giving it fresh water on the page right there from the spray bottle. And wipe the pink off of that brush so that I can go back in now and do blue. Blue on blue. So again, very, very subtle light pale colors on the left page and a half of the spread and then going dark right there where I'm going to add a fairly strong bold print over top. And I'm trying to keep that mat underneath that silicone mat clean. And again, I'm pressing down hard and I get more imprint from the tissue. And because I printed, lifted too much in doing that, I lifted too much paint up, I'm going to add a little bit more, bit more blue again so that it'll show up underneath the tissue print. Sometimes it's just a matter of trying something. If too much got lifted off, then add a little bit more. It's okay to, it's okay to have mistakes and then fix it. I need to give this a good blow dry before I glue down with matte medium. So now you can see why I needed darker colors in the background because it has to show up um, so what I'm doing is I'm using a wet brush to just safely tear away excess tissue rather than cutting. I want raw edges so I'm, and, and plus you'll see when I tear away more tissue, I don't want that big rectangle of white background there on top of my page. So I'm going to tear away, I'm going to use water to tear away, but I'm going to, as you can see, I'm leaving a border of about a good quarter of an inch around those shapes because I want to pick up, it almost like, I want to pick up a white border. And you'll see when I finish tearing away here how that will show up. I was going to cut it and I thought, no, I want it to be jagged and um, more organic. So I'm going to take by hand, I'm going to tear away. And it's easier to do because I did wet it a little bit, but I want to tear away so that it's almost like there's a bit of a white paintbrush that outlined the silhouette of those shapes. So I do want a bit of a, a thick white border on these shapes, but I didn't want all that excess uh, flat white paint on my page. So this helps right there. It puts more white on the page, but it highlights the shapes without having a big rectangular white square in the background. And I'm using the scissors to cut straight along the bottom. That's okay because I've got a straight bottom on the edge of the page. 
So I'm just trying to move around and find the best placement and what makes me happy. I'm trying to stay away from that black mark uh, where my left hand is. I don't want to interfere with that black mark making that I did in the background. Uh, so I'm going to steer clear of that. But before I glue down the white, the right side tissue print, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the left one first. I'm just placing some pages underneath so that when I put a big coating of matte medium down as glue, that I won't be going off onto the silicone mat. It'll stay on the paper towel and the pages that I've got underneath. So I've got my matte medium. I'll get my big brush and I'll smear it across those pages quite liberally because I need a lot of it down. I'm using a full sheet of that page on the left and quite a big sheet of print on the on the right side. So I need the full six by six inch pages here to be well coated all the way across with matte medium so that I could put lots down. This matte medium helps dissolve the tissue paper that doesn't have the print on it and what you end up with is fairly clear and more of the background is exposed wherever there's no white paint on the print. And I'm pressing from the middle out all the way around to get that secured down onto the paper. Spread that around. And then I'm going to use my fingers to just this fingertips, not fingernail, but fingertips, to just sort of press it down a little bit where it needs some coaxing. And it do doesn't hurt to get some more matte medium on top of there. All that me matte medium does, it, it glues it down and it dissolves any excess tissue. And I'm giving a good rub along the uh, edge of the page edge of the book there and tearing away any excess tissue while it's still wet and easy to tear off. So as you can see it was a very pale background and a very pale uh, subtle print that I did over top and that's okay that's one look and then we'll go bold on the next one. I like this accordion book when you open it up to see variety. I don't want every page to have the same formula, the same effect. I want this to be a journey. I want it to change. I want it to evolve. So let's get this bold pattern glued down. We need much more matte medium. fresh jar so I can take everything that's on the, the top lid there and put that down on the page first so that I don't waste any. This also gives a good coating on top of the paper background so it makes it stronger. So again, staying away from that black mark in the center of that page, moving it slightly to the right of that. I'm pressing it in place and then I will use the brush to spread it around. From the middle out, middle out, always from the middle out. And then use my finger, especially in the crease there. It's quite bumpy there and thick, so you need to really press that down. And that's okay. If you press down too hard and some of the tissue lifts off, if you can't place it back in place, then don't worry about it. I find the more white paint is on my tissue print, the more I have to press down because uh, that white, that tissue print now has a lot of white paint on there as well. So the tissue isn't dissolving. So it needs a little help to get it to, to stay secured to the page. So look at how effective, look at how putting that bold white tissue print just dramatically altered the look of those two pages there. And notice how I overlap so it's, centered over the seam of the pages and not right dab in the middle. That's really dramatic. And I've decided I've got some funky little um, squares that are irregular. I love that they're not perfect. It's, it's um, kind of modeled squares. They're not perfect and I'm doing a jagged edge on there to tear away. And I'm going to put this in between the two prints just to break it up a little bit. I want all of the printed tissues that I use on this half 
them all to be slightly different but but uh, coordinate well together. So I'm going to center it, not center it over that seam between the first and second page, but I'm definitely going to have it overlap that seam, the, the crease there. There we go. That's effective. They're all complementary and they're all different. And that's a lot of white squares. Later on, I have the prerogative of one that's good and dry. I might go over and add some more um, stain or some more glazing and change some of those squares from white to a color. But for now, that's good enough as it is. I really like how that's changed from subtle to the squares to the bold pattern. Now let's put some paint down on the right three. That's fun. I like it. So I've got three, two and a half more pages here to color. And I've got that top edge there. I like that top part with those swirly loop-de-loos. So that's a good part of that I'll use on the top there. But again, that's what I'm thinking right now, but I might change my mind when I get to it. And I'm not overthinking what's already down there on my black mark making that I did before. That's not dictating what I do here. Those are just there and I forget about them and I just put paint down and see how they, how they look after I add some paint. I do not want to overthink this or make it too planned. I want it to be very spontaneous and organic and intuitive. So I sprayed a whole bunch more uh, spray clean water from my spray bottle so that when I put these paints down, they'll spread around the page instead of just getting absorbed right into the paper. I've put two great, three great big circles there and just to sort of give it a different look and a different shape, that may or may not change, stay like that, but for now I just felt like that's what I should do. I'm spraying water on there to help it disperse and I'll use that soft brush to sort of coax it around. And I don't mind when this quinacridone Nicolaso gold blends over top of that magenta because it be, just becomes a nice orange. They're very complementary. I don't mind that at all. And again, I want to dab that crease because I don't want to soften the crease and, and deteriorate the fold of the paper. And I'm not overthinking what I'm doing here because I know I'm going to add a print over top. So I'm just, just kind of moving along without overthinking. Dabbing away any excess. Again, if I dab too much and lift too much paint off, I can add more later. Right now it doesn't look like anything. It looks a little bit um, chaotic, but this could change. You know me, with my abstracts, it's all about layers. And if you don't make bold moves, you can't remove and take away and reveal. You can't, you can't reveal something that wasn't put down in the first place. So I'm, I've decided I'll add a little bit more of the quinacridone Nicolazzo gold up top, because I, I do know I'm going to put some uh, those swirly prints up there. So I do need some strong background up there. And as you can see, that color changes when there's more water. It becomes more lemony. So because I put such a strong color up top, I'm going to see if I could press hard with the paper towel and get a bit of an imprint. And it did lift a lot of that away. But if you were to zoom in up close, you'd see that there's some dark bits of the texture of that paper towel there as well. And again, this is just experimenting and playing. It can change again. Every time I show you one of these things, techniques, and then lift off, that's okay. It gives me the opportunity to show you in something new in the same spot. I've decided I would like to have some more. I'd like to have blue at the right end. I started with blue on this back side, and I'm going to end with blue on the right as well. 
So I'm going to put some more protective paper towels underneath. Spray some more water. If I don't spray that water and if I put the blue down, it'll get very dark, go right into the paper, and it won't move around. So I need the water on there first. There's my favorite paintbrush. I like doing that because it eliminates paint strokes and it makes things more cloudy. Let's do some more imprint. I didn't want fingertips showing up, so I'm using the palm of my hand when I press hard so I get some different shapes. So that's fun. And again, I couldn't have had that effect if I wouldn't have gone bold with the blue in the first place. So don't be afraid to go bold. You can lift things off. And if you look up closely, you can see all the pattern now, the, the, the texture and pattern of that paper towel. So I've got that print out again. I'm just rotating around trying to decide where I want it. And if I do put it up there, then I need more blue. I lifted too much of the blue back. So I'm just putting some more down. I'm smudging it. There we go. Just, you know, it's subtle, but it's more. And I want to have a little green over to the right as well. And notice that green from the bottle. Once I put it over top of blue there, it goes quite dark green. So we've got different shades of green going through this spread now. Let's lift a little of that back. I'm not sure right now about those three rings that look like a coffee cup was set down. Uh, this whole time I'm working on this, I'm kind of thinking, do I like that or not? So we'll see what happens there. For now, I'm just concentrating on the green and blue. I've still got some other tissues. I'm toying with different solutions, but I'm not sure I'm liking that one. It could work, it could be fun, but um, I'm just trying to, to look at every option. These are, this is a stencil, like a rose petal stencil, and I quite like that. So I might use part of that because it's kind of going with the flow and the feeling of those pages and the movement. So I think I'm gonna put that one down. So I'll tear away what I don't need. I'm just picking and choosing parts of the white print that I want. I'm going to tear away the bottom of that and make my own kind of rounded bottom versus what was already there. So that's kind of neat. What I like is that the left side of there where my left hand is, there's a lot of uh, white swooshes there that will tie in and almost almost connect with that print that's on the left there that was quite bold. So I'm trying to make them, they're different that they're going to make sense because they're, they're, they're going to almost connect with each other. There's a little bit of a gap, but it's almost like now the shape of the rose petals turns into the other shapes that coordinate with the ones on the far left print. I like that right there. Those shapes kind of tie both both prints together. And it creates, definitely creates movement across the whole spread. So I'm just using my finger to press down, make sure that there's no um, tissue print that's not adhered to the page. And I'm scraping away some excess tissue that I don't need to look at. I'm just sort of scraping that free.
Again, notice how it dramatically alters the look of a page when you stick these printed tissues over top. It's just so much fun. And again, doing all of this, not once have I thought about those black marks that I made before. Um, they're not even on my mind, but they end up always, eventually, they just kind of, they're there, they kind of work. Part of them get revealed, some of them get covered up, but they work. And I'm kind of liking this. Remember on the far left, I had a very subtle print. And now on the and the middle, it's very bold. But now on the far right, I'm ending with a subtle. And I'm going to stick with this because I like how um, it's kind of um, distressed and faded and very light. It's a very light print. And I think that's a good way to end this book. So I'm just using my water on the paintbrush to sort of outline where I want to tear away the excess tissue. This is going to be fun. I like that. And I'm trying to avoid, I'm, I'm going over the center line of those two last pages and also trying to avoid that bottom right black mark making, which I quite like. I like to leave that where it is. So I've got those previously swirly little patterns that I'm going to put at the top and I'm going to keep this subtle print to the right and expose that black mark making on the bottom right of the page there. I think that's quite neat. I'm, before I, before I finalize that, I'm looking at another option, but I prefer what I've already what I've already decided on. But I never rule anything out, just in case. But no, I'm going to go back to the other one. Sorry for the head. I'm going to blow dry this really good before I put everything down. I, I feel like that that those circles, the rust colored circles are a bit too strong. So I tried to put rubbing alcohol down and wiping really firmly, but it's not lifting off very much, very subtle. But that's okay. We'll figure something out. And that rubbing alcohol ends up being quite sticky and tacky. So I'm going to have to spray my water bottle over there and wipe because that removes the rubbing alcohol. And then that allows me to be able to paint and do other things over top. So I'm just getting rid of the stickiness. So still thinking about the location of this print. Somewhere in that area. So I'm going to use my matte medium for a glue, put a good coating over the center of both those two pages. As it's a very large piece of tissue, so I have to do a lot of glue. There we go. Always from the center out, center out, all the way around. So it's really soft, and that was a very busy background before, but putting that tissue over top softens the whole look. Just removing any excess tissue, and where the tissue didn't get glued down with uh, matte medium, I'm adding more so that it won't lift off later. I like that. Subtle. It's very, very subtle. Almost looks like petroglyphs, which I love petroglyphs.
trying to decide what to do here. It's very, very busy. Uh, and I'm just trying to decide how to make it all make sense. Just tearing away while it's wet that excess tissue that hung over the edge. If you don't get it all, you wait till it's bone dry and then you cut it away. I'm still not 100% sure about that, but I'm moving forward to get... I, I want to put some more print over top and I'm using my wet paintbrush just to outline the shapes that I want and that way I can tear away the tissue print. And anywhere where the wet, where there was like that spot there where there was extra white paint and the wet didn't dissolve the tissue, just use your fingers to tear away. I am picking and choosing how much of the white pattern I want and what I want to tear away. As I go along, I'm just picking up the shapes that I choose to keep. And there again, the same thing. I'm just going to use that last little swirly. I'm trying to keep that loop-de-loo on the bottom there, but I don't know how excess, it's not very successful. So I just tore it right off. I would have used it, but it was falling apart, so I just took it right off. That's okay. That works just fine, because there's already some tissue print on the right there anyway, so I didn't need any extra. And I'm going to cut a straight line along the top because the top pages are straight. And this way I've got a good straight edge and I don't have any excess tissue. This will work. So I'm going to glue it down with matte medium. And then we'll go from there. We'll see, we'll see how it sits and what needs to be done once it's, once it's glued down. And once again, I'll be overlapping that seam, that crease of the pages, so that everything's a continual flow. Pressing it down gently with my fingers, and then I spread it out with the paintbrush. Always making sure there's lots of matte medium to keep it down. Now we have in the middle left there where the rose petals were, we've got a little bit of an overlap of tissue print there. So as I go along, you'll see how I take care of that because right now it's very, very busy in that orange area. I'm liking what's happening in the blue and green. I might change that a bit, but so far I'm quite liking that. And I've decided I want to get rid of the look of those rust-colored rings. So if I put more tissue down, I'm distracting from that. And I'm trying to line that up so it connects with the other loop-de-loos and makes sense. And now the focus is not on those rust-colored rings. The focus is now on these white swirlies. And I'm just scraping away any excess tissue that doesn't need to be there. It's still very busy with all this white print. Uh, we've got three different tissue prints there in white, and it's getting a little bit busy. But let's just see how this evolves. Again, I'm revealing, I'm in tearing away some of the wet tissue paper, it reveals a, an intense color below. So part of that is just to lift it off to give it intense color. And in some of the other areas, I left the tissue there because it makes it more frosty looking. You know, I like to create depth and I, I like to create illusion. And while that was dried and I, I started to look and I'm, I'm trying, it, everything's dry now, and I'm trying to look and see the flow. That's why I started it back up from the beginning of the spread and I'm trying to decide how do I like the flow of the pattern and colors from left to right. 
We've got the subtle. And I've decided it's too pale compared to the right. So I'm going to add some water in a container, add a little bit of the blue paint, and um, deepen the colors here and there as I see they need to be so that it's more of a, I'm creating layers of depth. Some of the blue will stay faded and some of it I'm just going to bring out a little bit deeper. And I'm adding the, I sprayed the water first and then added blue so that uh, there's no spray going over top of my work. The spray was done with just water. And what I'm doing is I'm going to test it. I've got a nice pointy little brush and I'm going to grab a piece of rough paper and test that color because I watered down that color. I want to make sure it's the color I want and not too dark. And that looks about perfect. So I'm going to move. I, I'm trying to go in and around and behind some of that white pattern so that the background goes darker and the white pops forward. So I'm just revealing a little more of the white pattern, which was very, very subtle. But I don't want to do that all over the whole page. I want to do it in just parts. Again, to create interest and create areas. When I do abstracts, I like busy places and then I like quiet places for the eye to land and to rest. So I do like to break things up and give variety. And always movement. I'm always looking for movement. So I'm following that pattern from the white print a little bit, but I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm not going to overdo this. And if any of it goes down too dark, I can dab away or I can clean off the paint on that brush and then see how I dabbed away. It removes some of that blue so that it's not so strong. And then I can reapply a little bit softly if I need it. And when you saw me dab away, there was too much blue on the paintbrush. So I dabbed it away. And then when I put it back down, all I'm doing is spreading that blue around. So it makes it subtler, much more subtle. I like that. So you might look and think, well, I wouldn't have thought to paint white like that. But in painting the blue behind, it's revealing the white and it's revealing shapes that you didn't really notice before, but now they, now they pop out. And I thought just with very little paint on the brush, I'm just fanning it around, smudging it around just to create cloudy layers of depth. So that's effective. That, that's fun. That's, that's something I do very often on my abstracts. And I've decided some of the white squares, I would like them to be blue to break things up a bit. So I'm painting right over top of the white squares, which is glazing. Right now what I'm doing is glazing. It's a transparent color over top of the white. So the white pattern underneath is still there, but I've glazed a color over top so it's just subtle. So I've already dramatically changed these two pages just by doing this little bit with the blue. And I want to bring some more of that blue in the background to pop those white shapes forward. And while I'm doing this, I'm trying to decide, do I want that, that right there, that big white shape? I might, I'm trying to decide, do I want it to be blue? Yeah, I'm going to put blue there and I might rub some of that back but I just wanted to break up some of that strong white and make it disappear into the blue a bit. And again, if you don't like it, you can wipe it back because that was just solid white paint on there. It's easy to take the blue back off of it. And then I'm just wiping off the excess brush from the brush and spreading that around to make it subtle. So that's kind of fun. It's a bit of a shaded white to blue shape. So moving along, I'm trying to decide where else. I don't think I have to do much with the blue on the far right. It's already, it's already modeled in a variation, but I, I guess what I decided is I reveal some of it in the top there. And again, what I'm doing is bringing forward that white loop-de-loo, loopy kind of pattern. It's called negative painting when you go over top later and you block out things. It's negative painting and you're creating new silhouettes. 
and forcing the eye to see things differently. So rather than painting the background first and then white over top, we've got that white already there from the um, gluing it down and now we're revealing uh, the blue background areas. And what I'm doing now is just revealing some of that white shape always going back and checking the flow. So I quite like what I've done. It, it's creating more depth of colors from left to right all the way through the whole spread. Now I'm going to do something similar with the other colors. I've got the pink, I've got the orange. I'm going to use my nickel, quinacridone nickelazzo gold and I'm going to add that with water. And I'm going to decide what to do with that busy printed area where the orange is on where below my right hand there. I'm going to, it's very, very, very busy. Lots of white there, which I don't mind, but it's almost too much white and it's a bit confusing. And again, I'm going to test the color. I like that. So I'm, I'm going to deepen some of the background orange, which makes that white swirly stuff pop forward. And this is definitely giving an illusion of depth. It really makes that orange pop into the background and the white pop forward. It enhances both of them and it gives de depth and it just draws out a pattern that was very subtle before. It's slightly going off the page there, but I will be working towards the left very shortly. I'm just trying to follow the paint lines that were already reveal, already there from the pan, from the stencil print on top of the tissue. So I'm just following. I, I'm not teaching you to be an artist here. All you're doing is following the silhouette of the stencil print that you had on the tissue. And you don't have to be particularly steady with the hand because it was an undulating. They weren't really strong, bold lines anyway. It was quite distressed, so that's okay. Nothing has to be completely perfect. So I'm just enhancing more of that Nicolazzo gold. So I've got layers of dark and layers of light. And again, I'm, I'm trying to follow the, the pattern of the print. But at the same time, I'm thinking there's still a lot to a lot of white here, and I got to decide what to do about that. Just like on the left, where I I did a glaze over top of the blue squares, I'm going to do a glaze over top of the red rose petals, and some of that area where the rose meets the pink, uh, so that we break up some of this pattern. But right now, I'm still, I'm still working with um, bringing out some of the, some of this other detail where the swirly loop de loos are. This is the part of my abstracts that I enjoy doing because I don't have to overthink. I am strictly in my zone. I'm not thinking about anything except just moving my paintbrush around the page. It's very therapeutic. This is just the calm. This is, like, again, I enjoy this. It's calm. I'm not overthinking. I don't have to plan anything. Everything's already laid down on the page, so it's just a matter of me deciding what do I want to cover over and what do I want to reveal. I'm just putting a few dabs of the stronger color there to bring out the richness of that color right there. 
And I'm also disguising the fact that there was a rust, rust colored ring there. I'm, I'm making it more like a, a cloudy patch of rust color instead of a shape. And there's this little bit I want to bring some of that orange over to the left there. It was already an orange fuzzy patch there anyway. And then I thought, let's just add a little more orange right there. Why not? And if I didn't like it, I could spray that with water and wipe it all off. But I kind of like, again, I'm creating movement. I'm, I'm, I'm allowing that orange to not just sit in one patch in the middle of the book. I'm allowing it to move across the pages. And I love how that orange goes over top of the pink. And I thought it was a bit too bright pink there anyway. So by putting the two colors together, it kind of smears it a bit and makes it a nice smudgy color and allows much more movement. And because I liked what that was doing so much over there, I decided to go right over those white shapes of paint and add more solid color on it so that they become shapes that they were, but now they're orange. So I like that. I'm happy with what's happening there. And that worked so well, I liked it so much, I'm going over some of those rose petals. I'm gonna do a lot of, I, I think I'm probably gonna do all of those rose petals, make it like um, a rose, uh, a rust colored rose. So before it was a white colored rose, now I'm making it an orangey colored rose, which is still obviously a rose. It's obviously there on the page but it's going to disappear, it's going to go back a layer, and the white will pop forward more. So I'm just, like I get said, again, I'm just trying to show you that I'm creating movement of that orange across the pages. I'm always taking a look and analyzing, because now we're at the point where we're getting close to being finished, and so it's just a matter of constantly looking at the flow. And since there's so much orange now on those two, two to three pages, that's why I wanted to spread it out a little bit left and right. Now I've decided so far, I've got that put aside, I might go back to it, but right now I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add some diluted green and I'm gonna paint over some of that tissue and that I tissue paint printed, uh, glued over the green, and I'm going to color some of those white lines. I'm going to make them glazed green. Again, breaking up some of the pattern of that white. So the pattern will still be there on the page, but it will be green, some of it. Again, doing a test on my paper. And now when I glaze that over top of the print, the print is there, the pattern is there, but it's a green pattern now a citrusy green. And I like that, that's, that's fun. Because these are transparent, high flow acrylics, they do act as a glaze. So you are not completely covering up whatever was below. You're, you're just glazing. I think that's fun. So I've created much more depth of colors now, much more interest across the pages. I'm gonna just carry that over a little bit to reveal, to enhance the background and reveal and make that white swirly pop forward even more. Yeah, I think this is fun. But I'm not gonna do it everywhere and I'm not gonna cover over in blue the other pattern. I'm gonna leave some of that white. So now I've got movement of the white. So our pages have changed dramatically, haven't they? What I want to do now is bring out my white fine liner dispenser there with white fluid paint in it. And I'm going to bring forward some of the, I'm just putting a little box down to weigh down that page so that when I add this white, it doesn't roll off the edge of the page. I want to keep the page flat. So I'm using this dispenser almost like it's a paintbrush to distribute that paint around that swirly shape. And then I've got a very clean fine line pen uh, brush that I'm spreading that white paint around. And I am just going over top of the pattern that's already there. I don't have to create the shape. It's there. I'm just enhancing it. 
And actually that's a fairly opaque white paint, even though it's very fluid. So it's really making that white print jump forward. I'm going to do a little bit, but not all these areas here, but I'm just going to bring out a little bit of these shapes. I really don't want to overdo it. I want them to jump forward and the rest of it to stay in the back background. So I'm just, I use the fine liner to distribute the paint and now I'm coaxing it around everywhere I want it to keep it permanently in place. And see how doing this has made those shapes pop forward now. They're like a layer over top of the background. Just a little bit, just touching it up in a few spots. And again, I'm not going to overdo it. I just wanted to bring out that oval. I do like to discover ovals and bring them forward. And that's what I'm doing. Plus, I like the idea of that overlapping the seam of the two pages. So again, and creating more flow across all the pages, creating a flow for the eye to move. I'm trying to decide how much more white to do. I'm going to do just a bit of those shapes on the left, but not all of them. And I didn't speed this up on purpose. I wanted to show you, quite often I'll speed things up, but I just want to show you how intuitive and gentle and flowing and therapeutic it is just to just to show it in real time how fun it is just to, to move that paint around with a brush. I'm trying to decide I, I like what's happening there but I think I want to do more orange over top of the print. I'm just spreading some of that. There was a bit of a water a water line where the orange stopped so what I'm doing is I'm enhancing I'm glazing over more of the white print to create more orange print. So that, that that's definitely a big rose now that's going to be in the background. I'm going to zoom in to show you and I want to, there's that one swatch, that there, I want to keep that white. Uh, so I will go over that as well, but right now I'm trying to avoid touching that, but doing all the rest behind it. So it's almost like you've got each color on a transparency, laying one on top of the other. You can see all the layers. Glazing's fun. It's, it's one of my favorite things. So now we have our orange petals, and um, they're blending into the background. It's very obvious now, and it's not anywhere near as busy visually with the white as it was before. And with doing all of that, shooting all of that in the background, you can really see now all across the five pages where the white pops forward. And it kind of showcases the white a bit more. So I'm just playing around with how much more to add. Now I'm going to go over that one swath that I wiped back and that I circled for you to see. I'm going to go over that with some opaque white so that really steps forward on top of that orange rose below it. This is the final touch to really make that pop forward. And it's best to do this when that layer below it was dry so that you don't smear white over top of a color and making it a muted white. And I decided to enhance a little bit more of that swirly with the white. There, that really pops forward now. And I'm continuing it a little bit to, the, to finish out the pattern of that swirl. So there you have it. It looks so much better now. And there's our book done. I'm going to show you the big reveal now. Both sides, it's all done. Here's the first side, which has most of the pages and the pockets. 
And this is how you open it up, looking at it just as a regular book. But again, you could pull it out as an accordion and look at it the long way, anytime you like. And now you just keep on going because now we've got the back side. And it's slightly different, but it all coordinates. So here we have it. That's how I like to display them on a shelf. They're too nice to be put away on a shelf closed. You need to open it up and show it off to the world because it's just so much fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing this series with you immensely, and I hope to see you for the next project. Thanks for joining.